much to everyone who has tuned in to this video. I truly appreciate you. And if you're new here and you enjoy Whispered True Crime, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I recommend using headphones if you'd like to hear the gentle mic brushing. Before we get into tonight's case, I'd like to take a moment to talk about Babel, one of the This video has been sponsored by Babbel. Hola, yo soy Nicole. If you've been watching me for a while, then you might know that I've been learning Spanish through Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. It teaches you real world conversation skills that you can use for travel, business, relationships, you name it. El autobús. El autobús. Tengo un problema. Click on the link in the description box to find out more and to get 60% off your subscription. I wanted to learn a new language because I live in New York and Spanish is very useful here. Since I've been using the app, I've learned so much and it hasn't felt at all like work. I actually look forward to the short 10 minute interactive lessons. It's been proven that with a few minutes on the app each day, you can start speaking in just three weeks. So imagine how much I've learned since I've continued with the program. Now I can enjoy conversations with my bilingual friend, when before I couldn't do that. She is so proud of me. See who you can connect with by learning a new language. Which language have you always wanted to learn and why? Now you can learn that language with ease through Babbel, and you can do it on your phone, tablet, or desktop. So click the link in the description box to find out more and to save 60% off your subscription. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Adios. Today's case will bring us to Florida by Nellis Park, Florida, which is not far from Tampa. Shout out to all my friends out in Florida. This case takes place on April 15th, 2009. And it is the story of a tragic love triangle. As with all love triangles, there will be three people involved in this awful tragedy and we will talk about each one starting with Sarah Ludeman. She was born in December of 1990. She was an only child and her parents lived in New York. Her dad was a driver. Her mom was a surgical nurse and they wanted to move to a warmer and safer place for Sarah. So they picked it up and moved down to Florida. Sarah was a very sweet and bright girl, but she was always slightly overweight which led to her being bullied about it quite a bit all through school. And she developed low self-esteem due to that. When she was in high school, she decided to enroll in a special program which focused on the veterinary profession because she loved animals and ultimately hoped to become a better 
boy. He was about her same age. But he was quite a player. He had had a lot of girls. You know the type. And they didn't really want their daughter involved with somebody like that who she would probably wind up getting hurt by. Probably the mo not the most loyal a uh, boys for her to be with. But she was super happy and super in love with this guy. And then one day she said to her parents, I want to switch out of that veterinary program and go to high school with Joshua. And her parents were not very thrilled with this, but they allowed it. So she changed schools. Now, let's switch gears and talk about Rachel Wade. Also from the same neighborhood as the other two. She was born in February of 1990. And she had and a brother and she lived in a middle class family she was your typical little girl she loved Disney princesses she loved art and reading and all was well until she reached about 15 and her whole attitude changed she became a very angsty teen, always arguing with her parents about things like curfews and schoolwork and clothing and the usual things that teens and parents argue about. But when things didn't go her way, she would run away. And in the beginning, her parents would go and look for her and bring her back, but she was doing it all the time, so they decided they would reach out to the police for some help, and over time, the police came to know this family really well, because they were constantly being called to go find Rachel. arguments turned physical, and Rachel started assaulting her parents. Things just seemed to be getting worse and worse. And according to her parents at the time, they felt it had a lot to do with her being just totally boy crazy. That was her whole focus in life. She w was obsessed with Boys, and she would do anything to make them happy. She would usually become very obsessed with whatever boy she was with at the moment. And then the relationships would always end badly. And she would just move on to the next boy at that point. When she was 16, she dropped out of school that she was going to be moving 
Rachel and Aaron. And this was Josh's way, like this was, everyone knew this about him, that he was a player. Him and his older brother were very similar in that they both did this sort of thing, dated lots and lots of girls. He was said to be a moocher. He, I don't know if he kept that Chick-fil-A job. I'm not clear on it, but he was always mooching money off of his girlfriends. They would buy him things like sneakers, clothing. They would pay his cell phone bill.
They passed by a friend 
she starts punching Rachel. She punched her three times in the head. At which point, Rachel had the knife, the kitchen knife, in her hand. And she proceeded to stab Sarah two times. Once in the neck and once in the chest. And then she threw the knife across to the neighbor's yard. And she said, I'm done. And she went and sat down and had a cigarette. Meanwhile, Sarah was in bad shape. Because the uh, stab to the chest went right into her heart area. So she crawled over to her car, grabbed her phone, and she didn't call 911. She didn't call her parents. Who do you think she called? She called Josh. And I guess she told him very briefly what had happened. I don't know exactly what she said. Someone said she told him uh, it hurts or something. I don't know exactly what the conversation was, but what he did is he went right away and he told Sarah's parents and they raced over to the scene of the crime. Now, sadly, by 2 a.m. the next morning, April 15th, Sarah was pronounced dead at the hospital. Rachel was arrested and charged with second degree murder and they sat her down for an interview with the police. She didn't even know at first that Sarah was dead. And she told them that she, when she stabbed her, she didn't even realize that she still had the knife in her hand, like it was just in her hand. And when Sarah just started hitting her like that, she just stabbed her twice. Like she really didn't even plan on it, she said. And also she said it was self-defense. So they told her, okay, we have to let you know she's dead. At which point she started crying hysterically. So, of course, her lawyer tried to argue that it was all for self-defense. And they brought in all these witnesses, whoever was there, to say what had happened, and there were varying accounts of it. Some people claimed that Rachel charged at the car and that it wasn't Sarah that came out first. But that didn't seem to really be the popular opinion. I guess we won't really know. So, the thing that really did it, the thing that really sealed the deal here, was the phone message that I read to you before which was from months prior, where she had said she was going to kill her, right? So that is what the jury really took away with them, was that it really couldn't be self-defense if she had stated that she wanted to kill her. So, Rachel was found guilty, and she was sentenced to 27 years. And that is the case. So what do you think? I will tell you some of my thoughts. So uh, the first thing we all want to know is why in the world were these girls so invested in this guy? Okay, that is the first question. Who would want to stay with a guy like this? And who would want to fight for him? Now, it has been said that he encouraged them to fight for him. Not specifically on, on that day, but in general, that he encouraged them 
she was kind of, you know, more stuck with him than the other two. The other two are free to just leave right from the beginning, you know, like, why stay there? Oh, and by the way, side note, two weeks before this murder, Erin and Sarah, they got into a fist bite as well. So this sort of thing was happening quite a bit, apparently. But this last one ended in a very shocking way. So, I mean, there's not much more to say about the whole question of why would they be with Josh? It just makes no sense. It, you know, like, we heard that Sarah had low self-esteem, but, you know, she was only 16 when we said that she had never dated a boy. That is not so shocking. I mean, how many people out there have never dated a boy by age 16? Tons of people, okay. And she didn't seem like a really quiet, introverted girl who could never find a guy, you know? It just sounds like she didn't need to be with him. She, she didn't need to be that desperate, so I don't really understand that, but whatever. So they just had very obsessive personalities, and they just, they couldn't let go of this guy. So the next question is, was Josh guilty here? Is he to blame for this crime? I would say that, well, obviously he is not legally responsible. Of course not, okay? But he is morally responsible, if you believe in that. It is not okay to go around treating women like the way he did. And encouraging them to fight for him. Granted, they were free to do what they wanted, but he had a lot to do with it. He was the center of the whole thing. He was the prize. And I have to say this. I hope it doesn't sound uh, disrespectful. I don't mean it to, but have you all heard the saying, play stupid games, win stupid prizes? This is exactly that. All three of them were playing a very stupid game, and they all three won a very stupid prize at the end. Obviously, Sarah lost the most here. She lost her life. Rachel lost 27 years of her life. She basically lost her life, so to speak. I mean, ultimately, she will, I guess, get out and still be young enough to make something of herself. But, I mean, you know. And Joshua, even though he did not face any legal consequences, this has affected his life in a major way as well. And I really hope that he's not out there doing the same things as he was before. But from what I heard, he was pretty tore up about it, to say the least. So then that brings me to the most difficult question here, and that is... How much blame does Sarah, the victim, have in this case? Now, we never want to blame a victim, okay? She's not around to explain her case or anything. So I am not trying to blame the victim, but was there some degree of self-defense here? Like, what do we think about the whole thing? Assuming that the story went the way I explained it, that she pulled up, she got out of the car, and she raced angrily out of the car, flailing her fists, and hit Rachel three times in the head. If you do that, isn't it possible that you're going to wind up getting hurt, in my opinion. Now, you might have a different opinion, and that's perfectly fine. Let me know in the comments. 
is what happened. And my heart goes out to her family as well. She was an only child, and I am sure that her parents were destroyed by this and will never be the same. So, I hope everyone, at the very least, has learned from this that it is not worth it to fight over a man or a woman. It is absolutely not worth it. If your partner is treating you the way Joshua was treating all of his women, there is no sense in fighting with anyone about it. Just move on. That's it. Move on. So, I am going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you found it to be thought-provoking. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And I hope you have a wonderful